Well, uh, it's um, <clears throat> it's time for trials and tribulations. Can we just plug in, please? There you go. All right. Uh, this is me. Yes. I'll use this profile. Play trials and tribulations. The final game of the trilogy. Dude, I have no idea what we're doing after we finish this game. Really, bro. Oh, Episode 1 Turn About Memories. Look at his chain, dude. What is he doing? Turn About Memories. He's so freaking rad. Huff, huff. Huff, huff, dude. Arg. How did I get into this mess? Dunk, 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 dunk. Why? Why did I do that? Young Phoenix, dude, before we got all that mess. That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. There's. You're lying. I gotta go into trials and tribulations. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Ellipses, ellipses. Uh, trials and tribulations. I'm talking to her like that. Oh, he's unconscious, dude. The right hook. Me punch. It's pay for Phoenix. It wasn't me. I, I didn't. Pog. I didn't do it. Five years earlier, me and Faye, second trial. April 11, 9.40 a.m. District Court, Dependent Lobby Number 3. Ooh, it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ahem. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, good morning. Ah, um, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know? What are you talking about? I'm relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Grumph, let go of my lapels. Humph. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I, er, I'm so sorry, it's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right, this is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grosberg, am at your service. Dunka, dunka, hunka, dunka. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprise me. What, with your earnest request last night? Let me handle this case, you suddenly said. And quite forcefully, too. Dunka dunka hunka ding. Sorry, I'm still getting things set up over here. I apologize. <clears throat> dunka dunka hunka dunka. Forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday about my case, I mean. What? And you already learned all the relevant facts? What about that? Well, about that, you see. I mean, of course I have, I think. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie. In any case, don't let our client see you're so nervous. You see that poor young man in that pink sweater over there? That's your client. Cough, sniffle. Good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I just want to say, I'll give it all I got. I'll, I'll be fine, no problem. Cough, achoo, achoo. Uh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers, people screw it up all the time. As I do have a cold, that's what this mask is for. My doc says it this way, I won't get it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Rye, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent, I'll promise I will save you. Yeah. Please, I let go of my shirt, cough. That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. Dunka, 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 dunka. My name is Mia Faye, I'm so pretty new with this lawyer thing. Of course you are. <coughs> hold, hold, I apologize. Dunka, 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 dunk, dunk. No 
What are you doing? Dunka, 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 hunka. <clears throat> Alright. Should be good. First time I appeared in court was a year ago. Dunka, hunka, dunka, hunka. But the trial traumatized me so badly I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. In one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win. For my client and for myself. April 11th, 10 a.m., District Court number 2. I actually got a red nose. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. I am more she doesn't. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Eleven the new comb over. The defense I mean, when he had hair, sorry. The defense today is Miss 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 BFA, right? How was it? Sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grosberg would be leading the defense. Yes, well you see. Mr. Grosberg had a, a bit of an emergency. You're not plugged into your hand when you are um no. Taking my case. We're just talking to people. Emergency, but isn't that him sitting right next to you? Yes, well. You're just a rookie, aren't you? Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't scare you. I need to give me your toughest look. Oh, of course, Your Honor. I think. Um, well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl, I will be it'll all be over soon. What was it all about? Trying to trash talk me? Now that I'd like to proceed with the summary of events and debate the question. Incident occurred on a campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Shwalo. He was a fourth year student studying um, pharmacology. Hmm. Sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken of the scene of the crime. Sure, he wasn't just, you know, faulty wiring and then just shocked to death. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. And the defendant, who had obviously uh, bungled his getaway, they then called the police. Hmm. Certainly, makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts the photo into the record as evidence. Crime photo 1 added to the court record. By the way, can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. Aha. Uh -huh. Your reputation for sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that the victim died a rather unusual death. Unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take the question. Huh? Simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. I'm a gentle man, if you will. Gentle man, if you will. I'm a what? Send to Mia, show him what you're made of. Uh, perfect opportunity, but what was it the calls it go on? Please say so you know at least this much. I'm so sorry, I didn't get the chance to read through the whole file. Where my hemorrhoids are being dagged up. I see here. The detail, the, sorry. Details of this case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Ah, the court record. I think I can see that by pressing the red bumper. Can't do it yet, though, I don't think. We can't expect it, but... Big little electric shock. All the weapons we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at this data here and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. Let's stay calm. Can't let the prosecutor get his, the better of me. Court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just pressed the red bumper here. Now I'm going to the attorney for the defense. Please answer the question. Cause of death. Of execution. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer used some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will bring home quite crystal clear at this trial procedure, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? My motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oops, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight. You want me to look at the profile? 
Nope. I really don't like this guy's bug attitude. That's Winston Payne for he's running a smooth operator if you catch my drift. They don't call him Rookie Killer for nothing, you know? Does he lose his hair in this case? Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Evidence. I don't need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all of our weapons can be found in the court record. If we find the evidence you need, and then i shove it to the old Greybeard's face. Yes, sir. In the old Greybeard's face. Alright, Mr. Grossberg. Try to set a better, better example for the young lady. The evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are there as well. I'll go between the profiles and evidence with the right bumper. I'm sure it'll go over well. I'm sure it'll go over it all. Now then, what was the cause of bad blood? Dahlia Hawthorne. Get the victim dog swallow up until eight months ago. Take that. The reason for that bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, was it? Um, my dog's barking. Give me a minute. I apologize, I am back. Um, seems I picked up on at least this much. What was it? What I do? A woman and the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mrs. Swallow. Clearly, she has some part in playing this story. Mm hmm. Done it again. Before the cross examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking that like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution will have to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What, the defendant himself? Well, Miss Fay? It's fine after all, Mr. Wright's innocent, right? Defense has no objection. Very well. The court called Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, um, well, right now, I guess I'm a suspect. I don't know, he means what you did before you were arrested. Oh, achoo, achoo, achoo. I was a university student. Sure, right? You understand that, but I didn't do it. I'm telling you I'm innocent. I'm telling you I was achoo, 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 achoo. Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his cold to the rest of us? It seems that the witness has something he wants to say. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor. Victim and I. Could you imagine having a, your a shirt with your an, an own initial on it? That's your entire shirt. I am. Um, I, I admit I was there. I'm not the killer. I, all I did was find his body. Oh, they knew the guy to begin with. Never even talked to that stuck up British wannabe. Well, Phoenix. Mm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Right, like I said, I'm not the killer. Well, it looks like the judge understands. Be naive, you know? Too naive. <sighs> Seems like you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be. This witness still has to undergo something called the cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right, and it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if the witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, their statement will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client, I inquire all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty. We see. What does he mean by that? Saying the, that testimony just now, and there was a contradiction? Yes, they were friends. Plus examination uh, if you uh, please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? Oh, he's a stinking liar. Hold it! When you say there, you mean the place where the victim was murdered? Y yeah, sort of. The place where something happened, anyway. Objection! Something? You can't hide what happened. We have photographic evidence. A chew, a chew, a chew. Anyway, Mr. Wright, what were you doing at the scene of the crime? I thought you said you didn't know the victim, Mr. Swallow. It was coincidence. We bumped into each other by accident. Coincidence, huh? You say you found a body? Who called? So we called the police. Huh? Um, a chew, a chew, a chew. 
Fortunately, it was some other students that notified the police. Other students. That's correct. Your witnesses. Witnesses saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. What? Is this true, Mr. Wright? I shoot with you. Would you stop sneezing every time you're in a bind? Well, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body. But, but I... So you didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right, um, well, no. That is, I mean... So, which is it? Did you know him or not? What you, what you? Now see here, you can't avoid answering the question by sneezing all day. Or, um, well, I guess I didn't know his name. News to me, why didn't you tell me that before? Um, I heard he used to name Dolly. Who the heck is that? This Dolly person. Oh yeah, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dolly Hawthorne. Oh, I see. I got love, so bittersweet. But that's all I knew about him. I know he's a British man. He used to, um, say the following in the testimony. How they knew the guy in the beginning with. That's right, I mean, why would I even? But that doesn't sound right. If you really knew him, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Well, Mr. Wright, I this it wasn't me, I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yes, well... Well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Now, I wanted to sink in there, I can handle it myself. I need your help. I just hit the wrong button. A slower here, I don't know why. Did you see it as um at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean. Yes, that's right, it's all at the crime scene. That's why, that's why I figured he must love the British stuff. It's true, cross my heart. That's where I didn't do it. I need fishy than salmon I ate last night. It's not Miss Faye, yes, Your Honor. Who is this person anyway, the Union Jack fellow? Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh I see. So you mean like the stars and stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor. Your insight astounds me. Occur to me? Yes, sir. Yes, he, he was not wearing the, that picture inside the jacket. Uh, inside, he was not wearing that jacket inside the picture. I, I'm, I'm aware. And I got this on my own, Mr. Grossberg. I, I know. This is my first rodeo. We're like 52 hours into the series now, or something like that. I don't know. Probably more like 45. Present. I don't even have to look at the photo, I already know. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Faye, something... Is there some point to the line of questioning? Your Honor, please take a look at another... Please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute. He's wearing a leather jacket. Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. Under the impression that you accidentally came across his body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that. I have no idea what he was wearing underneath the jacket. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me. Please forgive me, Wah. Sorry, the wire. Cat or dog? It's a cat, man. Cry and cry. Let him that pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix, anyways. He didn't believe I trusted him. Mr. Fray was all wrong. That was an impressive bit of cross examination. Thank you for uncovering the defense lies for me. Quite clear the man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh oh, did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, um, yeah, I took some, but. Was a medicine that you took an over the counter brand called the Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It feels cold's good. Hey, wait a second. How'd you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it. Does this even have anything to do with the case? 
Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where I call medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to look at another photo from the crime scene. What's this? This is the victim's hand. It's... It's Cole Colorette's. But even I've got a bottle of Cole Colorette's in my apartment. Objection? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. No doubt as to who this bottle of Cole Colorette's belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints all over it. Sensing his murderous intent, Ms. Swallow, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped it by Mr. Wright, and hid it in his hand. His purpose is doing so he only had his purpose in doing so can only be uh, have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Order, order in the court. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo as bottle and bottle as evidence. Very well, the court will accept them in the record. Crime photo two added to the court record. Cold Color X added to the record. Three oh five. Added three. And everything seems right here, so keep it in my, my memory bank. Ethan's watch was broken? Broken. Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, did you have some kind of explanation for this? Oh. No. Really bad? Oh, my buttocks, my poor, poor hemorrhoids. What really happened? Truth is, I won't because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so he agreed to meet at 245 behind the building. Told for a bit, and then around 3 p.m. sped up. Later we went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime that day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from your testimony that you gave previously. Achoo, achoo, achoo. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. Oh, forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Miss Faye, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright. Don't tell any more lies. What really happened? Hold it. Hold it. Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never. But that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is... My, um... It's kind of embarrassing. She's my, um, a sweetheart. Oof. What? Was that for? Maya? Oh, I'm so sorry, I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. Dahlia Hawthorne, sorry, Hawthorne, was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm, so it was one of these nasty love triangles. I see. Pharmacology department? Was it Mr. Swallow you and the, um, dedicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. The victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. The alchemist, I see. I gotta admit it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. Filled with chemicals and strange machines. All right, my bad. Um, filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. Oh, oh how fascinating! He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What did I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details. That's about the timing of the meeting. So you were absolutely certain that you met at two forty-five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this. The time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments? Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab whipping up something. Looks like he's right about the time anyway. When is let's go on with your testimony. 
phone for a bit, and then around 3 p.m., we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. Been taking cold color out for the last. Oh, what? Whoops, whoops, whoops. What was you talking about? You know, a chew a cough. Maybe we should hang out some again sometime? Hang out again sometime, I wish that were true. Hold it. <laughs> so you say you went back? Oh um, yeah, that's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. The wine minister, right? Why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one's buying this. Rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? That's just highly sumptuous. Or just, you know, just get a cold any time of the year. Am I dying? This dude's bundled up. I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. It's a shirt and keep sleep, but the window open is early in the spring, huh? It's always common sense, it's not always common. So, anyone else? Hey, plus, you're at university. People are sick all the time. Anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. Day of the lunch incident? What did you do for lunch? No, oh, what does that have to do with anything? Can't be too sure. I was with Dally, just the two of us. Homemade lunches are just the greatest. What kind of homemade lunches? Mini omelets? I'm not a big egg guy. So like mini omelets for lunch. I know there's more to an omelet than egg, but it's the, the stinking foundation of an omelet. Are magically delicious. Uh -huh. Ouch, why'd you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm so sorry, I just felt like hurting something one that all of a sudden well me. I don't know. Can't seem to find any contradictions. Always exactly what I'd call a natural boy liar, you know. But still we can't have him continue to spout nonsense. What can I do? Certainly must still be hiding something. Information. Right now it's more information we need to we press the other option, right? I just chose the wrong one apparently. Wondering if you could tell us more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, yeah, sure, I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in their testimony, is something interesting. It said the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non standard voltages. There are high voltage cables everywhere. High voltage cables? Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. High voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere here. I think it's enough for now. I didn't end the victim at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene of the crime for an unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by the explanation and not the medicine bottle, bottle either. Be frank here, Mr. Wright. This money cannot be trusted. What do you mean? I knew it was too much work for a little girl, but it's just offensive. I mean, it's like, what, 23 here? However, there is no one this I think? No? 21? No, I think 23. This is five years before, right? I think. However, there is one mystery that still remains, and she's two years older than Phoenix, if I remember correctly. Could be mistaken. Maybe just one year. One to three years, guaranteed. Um, however, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. Oh, the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is, I, uh, you are correct, Your Honor. So how healthy was Mr. Swallow killed? If we somehow establish how it was done, maybe it could still come out of this mess smiling like a rose. Your Honor, yes, Miss Faye. 
believe that if we were to piece together everything we have heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. Quite the brash statement coming from our rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Of course I know that. Actually, I totally forgot about that. Now that Miss Faye, let me see what you got. <coughs> I'd say this picture captured it quite well. What? There's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Mm, I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where is Ali the photo of the murder weapon? Uh, Bazinga. Bazinga. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's that. What is that? A severe, a severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard? Machines that the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then the high voltage cable. The high voltage cable is the cause of death. Most likely an explanation. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, how's that? What do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Not totally with me, old man. No, no. The victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high voltage cable. However, won't you use it to think about what this really implies? Only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was. So you told me this dude has got a ladder, climbed the 14 foot ladder, snipped the cables, and then they just, the dude just got struck by the cable? Which is certainly true. Yes, and this will all be a proof. Beautiful proof that we will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. You do? Well, what is it? It's fingerprints. Fingerprints. You mean the defense fingerprints were on something besides a medicine bottle? You know, look at the crime scene photo. Umbrella, a good jacket, and as you know, the leather holds fingerprints quite well. Ah, you mean? Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket, palm print of the defense's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left the print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards his severed electrical cable. Order, order, order. Enough. Who's just standing next to a uh, live wire? You can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross examination. It's a good pork in us, we're done. Mr. Grossberg, my hemorrhoids never lie, the show is over, Mia. Knew that boy to me the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. Further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt, Your Honor. I am prepared to re render a verdict in this case. Further to add, Miss Faye? Is that what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth, the whole truth. You have if you don't say something now, the judge was going to hand down his verdict. But I I can't, I just can't say it. If I told you what would really happen, then I'd be It's okay, Mr. Wright, I'm your attorney, you can trust me. Miss Faye, no matter what it is you have done, I believe in you and I will represent you to the very end. We've already established the defense guilt. No further need for him to say anything. Cough, cough. Wait a minute. Mr. Wright, I... I'll tell you what really happened. Objection! But I've already told you, Mr. Wright, there's no need for further cough. I, 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 I did it. I admit it, I pushed him. It's my fault. That girl you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you, for your sake, you're lying. Just listen to me. There is something you need to know about that girl. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Ugh. Would you just say it was the truth? Yes, I I was afraid. I was afraid if I didn't if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. As things currently stand, we are absolutely convinced you are. Please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time, I swear, I swear, I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Fay? I I believe in you. Oh um, thank you. Still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Um, it feels like my hemorrhoids are doing it. The Harlem Shake. That 
guy. He was talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. Went back, but he was lying there, dead. Well, that explanation is rather quite simple. When you pushed him, the swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. Back from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, the late rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But, when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. There had been something like that, but even I would have noticed it. That's true, even a, a doofus like him, sorry, doofus, like him couldn't miss that. Hmm, Miss Faye, let me warn you right now that if you cross examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he's innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. So what kind of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. Is that all? Yep. Well, Miss Vey, you have heard it from yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just, I just... Lost my temper and gave him a shove. Can you tell me about what happened in a little more detail? That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. When I, that's when, that's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. I just gave him a light, gentle shove with the chest. And what you, uh, when you did that, there were no separate cables anywhere to be seen. Right. It was nothing like that at all. But it is possible that you merely overlooked it. Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let the guy's theme roll over you like a cheap asphalt. I believe what's important here is the moment the push occurred. Continue on with testimony, witness. A loud noise. And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Ray? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. Like, snap. You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. Clearly, you were your honor, it was the sign of the victim being educated. Objection. You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? Ask for more details. It's right, the loud noise you heard, um, heard may be extremely important. How do you remember what that was? Um, how did I put it back? It was like a, a sharp crack. Uh, could it be? Could it have been? It could have been heard up until us. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. Oh, right on top of him, and it broke. That's what probably the noise was I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did the umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella, cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was terribly soaked at the moment. Mm, Miss Faye, what do you think? Is there something important to that testimony just now? Oh, uh, well. No, this cheap umbrella is more than important and vital. I want to officially have it entered in the testimony. How perfectly fitting, flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. Court agrees to the defense's request. Defense, please add that bit of umbrella to the year testimony. Hold on, it's a cheap umbrella. Attention! Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that. I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at this crime scene photo. We're under Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look at closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim, and also he's like lying on his chest it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. Conclusion here is obvious. Under the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell over, in other words. After he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. Aww. Dunk, dunk, dunka, dunka. Order, order, order. The victim he moved. Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. The one I presented as evidence immediately. 
Dunka, dunka, dunka. Oh, by the victim found broken your electrical pole at the crime scene. But, but the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. Objection. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. Simply no way could have been blown there by the wind. Oh, no, no, I'm from the butt. I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render the final judgment. No. No. Oh. I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in this prosecution's case by your, the defendant's testimony. The victim fell on top of his umbrella, and there was a loud snap when that happened. Well done, Mia. How's your hammer saying stuff now? Ha uh ha, -huh. Mr. Payne, what do you think clutching and uh, chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor, it seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could um, establish guilt through cross-examination alone. Pretty don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess you have another witness. Exactly, and this witness's testimony will be incontroversible. Verdible. Who's the witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You mean, don't mean Dolly? I do, Your Honor. And Severio Loverin is a witness to the whole thing. That's right, she was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Oh, the hair push. Bad news. You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I'm not waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at court. We'll now enter a 20 minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. April 11th, 11.52 a.m., District Court, Defense Lobby Number 3. Miss Faye, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I, I, it's alright. At least you told us the truth in the end. Missed you right. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. But, but, but the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She, she's the love of my life, that's why. Love your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Alter? Sure, no problem. Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago, right after, uh, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. Anyway, one day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That is why, that's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As I first had eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Now we're here, take a look at this. She gave me this the day we met, a symbol of our love. Been wearing it around her neck that day, but then took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. I gave it to you as a present, I say. Weird. Darling little bottle and filled with memories of my darling little Dolly. Dolly. Certainly a, is a little bottle, alright. Makes me so happy I showed everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Small bottle necklace given to the right on the day of the met they met. Shows it to everyone. Well, um, anyway. So after that, you and, uh, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating? Yeah, but she's shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give, me a, uh, give it back to me now. What a strange girl, asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dolly at Hawthorne was eight months ago. Wouldn't happen to have been August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was. How did you... Happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this, a newspaper clipping? Let's see, murder in the courthouse. No, murder? What are you reading there? Let me see. Oh, I see, Mia. I think I understand what you're trying to say. I think you understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe this is some, there's some connection between the two cases, am I correct? Can I read it? Very little information is being disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse. The cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female colleague, sorry, college student who was sitting with the victim. I I need to finish this myself. Ah oh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have here will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like our recess is over. Not over, we better all get moving. You wanna walk away for a minute here? And the drink. Searching longer than 20 minutes though. Dunk, 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 dunk. 
Alright, I will be right back.